Welcome back to Stage Zero Life Sciences Channel on a mission to help reduce the incidence of late stage cancer through early intervention. Joining us to take us through uh, the company's recent expansions, uh, James, the Chief Executive Officer, as always. Welcome back, sir. Thank you, Kyle. Pleasure to have you back on. So getting right into this, when it comes to the expansion of Stage Zero launching a nutri uh, nutritional platform, how does this play into the company's synergies? Well, you've got to think about the fact that you're we, we're catering to patients with cancer. Um, we're also catering to a leading edge group of patients with cancer. They're the ones that typically move outside of just standard of care. They're looking for every opportunity to get a positive outcome. So therefore, um, they have a variety of needs. One is obviously standard of care. Standard of care starts with you know, sort of full diagnosis, typically follows surgery, radiotherapy, then chemotherapy. Um, when you don't get the full benefit out of all of that, or if you're trying to optimize the effect, um, you work with groups like ours. So that's the care oncology side. And if you think about what we do there, we add the adjunctive treatments. We go back to our glioblastoma study in terms of which we showed a doubling of overall survival rate in the first 18 months. Um, as we've talked about before, we're repeating that study um, or expanding it, I should say, as we move on out. So we'll continue to build evidence there. But what about diet? What about mental health? What about a uh, what about additional treatments? What about, for example, perhaps some very high dose of vitamin C, um, IV vitamin C? You look at all of these as you take them through. So we're expanding our offering to make sure that one, we cater to what the patients actually want. That's critical. Two, we're providing a very novel entry point to our program. And so I, I think we had a number of questions this past week that said, mm, what are you guys doing? And um, so to explain that is very simple. We need your eyes on us. Um, it doesn't really matter how we get your eyes on us, but we need to attract your attention. If that is um, via you know, the adjunctive aspect to standard of care, if it's via the fact that we've been in business for 13 years doing this, if it's the glioblastoma study, or whether it's nutrition, or whether it's new, um, mental health programs, or whether it in actual fact is, guess what, a, a live cooking lesson to show you how to repair these. All of these are very positive. We get more eyeballs on us, more eyeballs on us brings additional people in, brings additional revenue. And if we in fact talk to what we did this last weekend, we took the program live on Friday evening. Um, by Saturday evening, we had a significant number of enrollments into the nutritional program. But even more important, a series of those spilled over into looking at us overall. And we had new enrollments into our overall program. So it builds, it begins to build up. So that's what it's all about. So when you say you're seeing a bunch of new enrollments a spillover from these nutritional platforms and mental health platforms, can you just kind of expand a little bit farther on how that offering is directly attracting these new patients? Yes, exactly. Um, if, you know, breast cancer, one, one of the, the sort of key learnings for me in all of this is that um, cancers actually have different nutritional plans or should have different nutritional plans. The kind of diet that you might develop for a woman that has breast cancer, in fact, is different to what you might develop for a male that has prostate cancer or someone with colorectal cancer. So therefore, it, it is very topical. We have a very large number of breast cancer patients. We have a lot of prostate cancer patients, a lot of colorectal cancer patients. But so you want you want to deal with, with that. You want to attract them by giving them additional information in terms of where it is. So what do you do? You're offering a better and better program. Um, however, they tell friends. Um, we sent this out, for example, our pharmacy partner goes to, to many thousands of patients in terms of what their newsletter is. And just as an example, what they did was they took that through and we had new patients come in and say, oh, OK, I didn't know about you guys. Um, let me see what I can find out. We've worked through a group out of Boston and New York as they've taken it out. They're very close links with a lot of the breast cancer support groups. They've taken it to the breast cancer support groups. Guess what? We're now getting a whole lot of new inquiries that say, hmm, gosh, didn't know you guys existed. Nice to know. And so it brings in. And so you build and you build and you build. Now, there's a big difference between your consumer offerings in the U.S. and Canada. Can you kind of explain uh, the differentiated um, you know, product offerings and how they work in their, their given healthcare sectors? 
Yes, a critical, critical question. Um, I think we have a lot of um, Canadian investors and you know, in Canada used to pretty much getting everything for free. It's not free, you, you know, we pay for it through our taxes, but on the other hand, if you need access to it, you get it. In the US, it's completely different. You pay for your health care. Um, so I sat in actually on a very interesting session yesterday with um, one, of, one of the lab groups and um, they had a very nice presentation about working direct to consumer with that. And the, the reason they're going down that route, as they talked about, is because people in the U.S. control their health care. It's, it's more than 55 percent of Americans at the moment that actually have what's called a high deductible health care plan. That means the amount that you pay out of pocket before you can actually access the insurance coverage is, is a pretty significant amount. And I think the number that was quoted overall is that something like 13,000 per family was the last numbers I saw around this. So therefore, people make decisions on how to use their health care, where to direct it, um, what to do with it, and what to pay for personally before they know that their insurance is going to kick in. Um, being positioned in that is absolutely correct. And so our way of taking it out to them, our way of making sure that it's extremely consumer friendly, extremely patient friendly is absolutely critical. You've got to explain it at the right level, but you've also got to provide a pretty broad offering that actually meets all of those needs. So, so think about it. You're believe you might have cancer or you're concerned about cancer. You come to us and we can offer you Aristotle. That's a very significant advantage. Um, the next thing is um, if you are diagnosed with cancer, we can put you into our adjunctive program. We can do that right at the very beginning of your treatment. We can do it partway down your treatment. We can do it later on as you head towards remission. We deal with all of that. So we have, we have the whole therapeutic aspect in terms of dealing with it. It's oncologist led. We have oncology nurse practitioners. We have metabolic specialists. We have all of this within that. Now what you have is you say, well, yeah, but I, I, I need help on the nutritional side. Okay, that's fine. So we've now added that. So not only have we added that component, but you're paying for it because in the US you direct your own health care. Canada less so. Key, key, key distinction. I think this was a very clerical and I appreciate the insights today as we pass it off to the viewer. We'd love to know what you think in that comment section below and consider subscribing because as news and catalysts continue to come into play, of course, we're going to bring it to you here. But on that note, as always, we look forward to catching you in the next one.